This is Piers Morgan Live. Many attorneys would tell you that uh, a case is won, essentially, in jury selection. And I think that um, as a family members, we have concerns. We have faith in juries that they're able to rise to the occasion and do the right thing and find a just outcome. But we've been living under constant threat ourselves and not having the pool sequestered. I'm you know, talking about the nature of the media. I'm sure the media is going to be very interested in finding out who these jurors are. And I'm, I'm very concerned their safety could be compromised. That concerns me because Florida includes lesser included offenses in, an, in, in, the, uh, in the charge. If George is not convicted of second degree murder, it wouldn't be the first time that jurors feel pressured to convict him on perhaps manslaughter or involuntary manslaughter because they feel like they have to do something. In terms of George himself, he's put on a lot of weight, raising some people to be pretty concerned about his physical and perhaps mental condition. I mean, how is he and why, why has he put on so much weight? Well, I think, I think George put on the weight because of the stress. I mean, he's been completely railroaded. This is not a case about race. He was, as you called him a year ago, you know, the most hated man in America. Um, everything that he held dear and sacred, uh, the criminal justice system, the truth, uh, the police, for example, that they would do the right thing uh, was tossed out the window and he was charged with murder and I think that's the, w the way he is responding to the stress. Obviously if George had not had a gun on him that night the distinct likelihood is that Trayvon Martin would still be alive. Does he regret now carrying a gun around like that? Do you think? Well I, I can't talk about George's regrets but I certainly... Do you regret that he had? Absolutely one? not. No I think that sends the wrong message that if we don't have a gun um, then our attacker would still be alive. You know, maybe George would not. And, and George is just an example of a very straightforward self-defense case, but that happens all the time. If you're allowed to have a gun... But you actually think that Trayvon Martin was going to beat your brother to death with I don't, his bare hands? I don't have any idea what Trayvon Martin was going to do. that's all he had. I mean, he had a packet of Skittles in his bare hands. I mean, is that really what you think would have happened in that case? I think that there has been discoverable evidence that's come forward that shows that Mr. Martin really enjoyed fighting. He really enjoyed fighting. He's not beating people to death with his bare hands. Right, but let me finish about what Mr. Martin enjoyed or what's evidence that he enjoyed. He enjoyed beating people until he saw enough blood, going back to attack people until he saw enough blood. He was very disappointed, allegedly, that he had lost fights because someone had sat on top of him. He really had an interest in guns, marijuana plants, Drugs. Right, but how much of that is relevant to the fact that on that night you had a 17 year old boy with no gun, just armed with a packet of Skittles and a, a soft drink, meets your brother, there's an altercation. If it hadn't been for the gun, they would probably, probably have both just walked well, away yeah, and wouldn't have been seriously hurt. I think it's relevant to your question because you said, is it likely that that would have just happened? You know, I don't know that it's likely that that would have just happened because I don't think they were just two people that just got in a scuffle. I think one had a proven propensity for violence. Uh, and, a, and a, you know, a, a history of participating in that kind of MMA fighting, and the other did not. So I, I think it's relevant to your question.